It is time now for Weather School for Kids. Hi, I'm meteorologist Lisa Spencer, and today we're going to give you some good tools so that you can try your hand at being a TV weather person or a TV meteorologist. We'll even throw a couple of hints in there how you can start now learning to be a television meteorologist. So glad you could be with us today. So you got it. Our topic is reading those weather maps. So you look at these maps and zoom in on this. That looks like a bunch of spaghetti, right? What does this all mean? We've got blue lines and red lines and purple lines and L's that are red and H's that are blue. They've got to mean something and they definitely do mean something. As a matter of fact, all locations, all meteorologists across not only the United States, but across the world use the same weather symbols. That way we can all communicate. And when you see a weather map, you know exactly what those symbols mean. Well, let's take a look at some of them. We've got highs and lows and warm fronts and cold fronts. Those are some of the basic ones that I really want you to know today. Let's start with highs and lows. Highs are blue and they're H's, which makes sense, right? So what we're representing when we're talking about highs and lows is we're talking about high pressure and low pressure. And kind of simply put, it's a way to measure the weight of the air. When we see our big blue H representing high pressure, we can also think about the winds blow around a high pressure in a clockwise motion, so just like the face of a clock. And then when we see low pressure, they go the opposite direction. When you get a high pressure and a low pressure together, really tight, things are very, very windy. But let's talk a little bit more about what we get when we get high pressure. When we think of high pressure, we think of sinking air. And you know what? I think I wrote it opposite there, but we think about sinking air when we think about high pressure. That's what I get for copying paste. And then when we think about low pressure, oh, there it is, sinking air. When we think about low pressure, we think about rising air. So air that is rising up. And when you have those two doing those things, they bring about a certain kind of weather. What kind of weather would that be? Well, when we think about sinking air, we normally think about sunny weather, not so many clouds, because when the air is sinking, it scours out all the clouds. And we get, a lot of times, a really sunny day. Now, in the wintertime, it might be a cold sunny day, and in the summertime, it might be a hot sunny day. When we think about low pressure, we normally think about stormy weather because that low pressure is going to be rising. And when you get it to rise, we see clouds start to form. And oftentimes we'll see showers and even some thunderstorms. So when you think about high pressure, we think about sunny conditions or nice weather. When we think about low pressure, we think about more stormy conditions. So those are two things to remember. Now, let's add a few other things in there. We've got a low here on our map, but we also have these blue lines. That's a cold front. This is a warm front. And the purple, that is an occluded front. That's a little more complicated, but we'll touch on that too. Let's start first with the cold front. So easy to remember what this is. The cold front is the front of cold air. Makes sense, right? So we've got cold air behind it, and for this example, it's 28 degrees, 31 degrees behind that front. And then ahead of it is the warmer air, so 55 and 62 right there. But everything on this cold front has a purpose. It's blue because it you know, represents cold air. When we normally think of cold colors or cool colors, we think of blues. And when we think of warm colors, we think of reds. Now, not only is it blue because it's cold air, but it's also blue and has little triangles. Those triangles tell you which way that cold air is moving. So the cold air is moving this way. Next is the warm front. And kind of the opposite of a cold front, a warm front is the leading edge or the front of the cold air. 
So when we see this, it will always be red. And for example, here it's 55 degrees behind the cold front, 62. And out ahead of the front, it's cold, 28 and 31 degrees. So you get the idea. These little half circles are also used on the warm front. What that means is the warm air is moving this direction. And a stationary front. What do you think that might mean? That the front's not moving very much at all. As a matter of fact, the cold air and the warm air are kind of stuck. And that's a stationary front. And then the occluded front, well, when you think about this cold air and warm air, you really think about a battle going on with the cold air and the warm air. In the occluded front, the cold air wins. And so it's just cold air taking over. And that one is a little more complicated. But let's stick with cold and warm front for today. So here is our cold front. We've got cold air. See the blue line? Cold air pushing into warm air. That warm air rises and we'll see those clouds forming. And a lot of time we'll get rain. So think of the blocks again. We've got cold air running into warm air. And that warm air is going to rise and go up over the cold air. Also, another thing to think about when you're kind of thinking about which, which is going to go which way. When we think about cold air, whoops, excuse me, my balloon is running away from me. Where did it go? Come back. This is live on Facebook after all. Okay, so when we think of cold air, cold air weighs more than warm air. So remember, cold air is a lot heavier. Warm air is going to rise. I like to think of this, an easy way to remember it, is a hot air balloon. And you know how the fire goes up into the balloon, they're warming the air, and that warm air makes that balloon rise? That's an easy way to think about it. So I'll corral my balloons again. All right, so our cold air is pushing into the warm air, and it goes up under it, and that's when we start to see those clouds form. Now let's talk about what happens with the warm front. The warm front is moving this way. So this time the warm air is just kind of slowly trying to nudge up against the cold air. And again, we will get clouds forming, but not always do we see rain when we get that warm front coming in. So let's put all this together and show you a weather map. And this just happens to be the weather map that we think will be tomorrow. So we've got high pressure, look where it is, right over the state of Tennessee. So that high pressure is sinking air. What kind of forecast do you think we might have in Tennessee tomorrow if we've got sinking air and we normally think of high pressure as what? Nice conditions, you got it. Tomorrow is going to be so nice. Where might it not be so nice? Well, right here, in Florida, there is a cold front, and you can see that area of low pressure. What do we think about low pressure? We think about our air rising, forming some clouds, and maybe raining. So this cold front is warm, running into warmer air, and they are looking at rain across parts of Florida tomorrow. And then it's going to be really chilly up here across parts of the north. So. If we were doing a weather cast here using our map, we might do something like this. And I'm going to show you how you can make your own coming up in just a second. But here we go. So I'm going to be the TV meteorologist today. And here's what I might say. Well, taking a look at our weather map, we have high pressure in control right here in Tennessee. That high means we're looking at sunshine coming up for tomorrow. Something else that high means is we are looking at winds blowing this direction and clockwise, that's going to bring us more of a south wind, so tomorrow will be a little bit warmer than today. Now, if you've got grandparents down in Florida, they're going to be getting wet weather because we've got a front pushing in across Florida today. So if you've got plans to play outside tomorrow, perfect. It's going to be a beautiful day. Now, can you try that with a weather map? Well, let's talk about using a weather map and how you might be able to try being a TV meteorologist. You can just get a map online and maybe practice in front of your computer. 
And one thing you might do is, if your parents don't mind, you could tape, cut out of construction paper, and I've already done this, cut out of construction paper, an H and an L, and you could tape them on your TV screen, just like this, or on your computer screen, to represent what the weather will be like. And you can also do the same, I think I lost it, with a cold front and a warm front, just by cutting them out of a piece of construction paper. Make sure you do the right colors though, red for warm front and blue for cold front. So you could put your H's and your L's on your weather map like this. Now while I've got this up, something else that's really important to know, if you noticed my other map I was using didn't tell you what states that you were looking at, right? This map actually has the states on it, but a really fun activity that you can do that's gonna help you so much is learning geography. Know where Tennessee is on the map. Know where Florida is. And know where Vermont is. And an easy way to learn how to do that is print out a U.S. map and cut the states out. Or you may even have a U.S. puzzle at home. But you can cut them out and practice putting the United States together. That will help you learn the states. Here's one little trick that I learned a long time ago. Vermont has a clue. Vermont is shaped like a V. So find little things that can help you remember. Tennessee is a very long state. We've got states out to the west we call the Four Corners. Do you know why we call them the Four Corners? Look at this. Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico all come together right there to Four Corners. So that's an easy way to help memorize those states. So while you're thinking about your weather map, if you're a TV meteorologist, you need to know all your states without having the names on the map. Now let's say, for example, that you don't want to put tape or H's on your computer screen, or that's just not going to work for you. Look at a trick I learned a long time ago. You can take a whiteboard, or if you have a chalkboard at home, and mine is kind of old, but it's okay, you can draw the United States and check it out. I don't do it that bad. It's not perfect. But it's pretty close. There you go. Vermont's up here somewhere. Where's Tennessee? We're right in here. There we go. There's the shape of our state. So what you could do with this is you could take pieces of chalk and draw your high pressure and draw your low pressure right here on your chalkboard. And then we're going to put our cold front across Florida. And you can have even a little more fun with it. Get your green chalk out or your green marker, whatever you have, whether it's a whiteboard or chalkboard, and draw some kind of hash marks there to show the rain. And you can even have more fun here and go cold. You can put some symbols on here to represent the sun. So voila, we've got our own chalkboard and we can do the weather the same way. So we've got high pressure, which is what? That's gonna be sinking air that's gonna cause a sunny day coming up tomorrow in Tennessee, also into Alabama and Mississippi. And then we've got a cold front coming across Florida. That means some rain across Florida coming up for tomorrow. So that's your weather map. I hope you've learned a little bit today and can do a little weather forecast for me. I would love to see your weather forecast. Now while you're at it and thinking about maps, one other little thing I want you to work on, learning the states here in Tennessee. Are you in Nashville? If you're in Nashville, you live in Davidson County. If you live in Lebanon, you live in Wilson County. So important to know this. The reason being is because when we have watches 
and warnings that are issued, those warnings are going to be issued for counties. That's why it's so important to know the name of your county. And it's easy to do. You can do this just like I mentioned how you can do the U.S. map by making you a puzzle. Well, you can find a map like this online. You can print it out or you could just look at it and draw it yourself, but you can make a puzzle out of it and that will help you learn the counties. But you really need to know your county and the counties around you. If you live in Franklin, you live right here in Williamson County, Rutherford County, maybe you live in Murfreesboro. So learn the counties and the cities around you. Now, here's the fun part. I've been asking people for weather art. I show a lot of it on TV. You can draw me a picture of a weather map that you've created. Also, you could record a little version, a short little video of you doing the weather, and I will show some of those on television tonight. If you want to do that, just send it to me at lspencer at wsmv.com. Either your weather art with your weather maps, or you can make a little video and send it to me at lspencer at wsmv.com. Well, I hope you have learned a little bit about reading weather maps today. If you've got any other questions about weather maps or weather in general, or maybe a topic that you'd like to learn more about, be sure and send that to lspencer at wsmv.com. You can get your parents to help you with that as well. I have lots of other weather videos that I have made that teach you about all different things like tornadoes and thunderstorms, and you can find those on YouTube on the Lisa Spencer channel. Thank you so much for joining me today for Weather School for Kids. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.